the exact location of your emergency. She said, I feel nasty about what I've done. And I was quiet for almost a year. Come back to a Natalie Amos, D. David revoked. That is repulsive. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nancy Ammons with the Channel 4 I team. Tonight, a special report, Influence, Infidelity, and Men in Power. It's an investigation that began after police closed the book on a suicide here at the Stallman building. Now, this detective's report contains allegations and names that are so compelling, we just had to explore them. Friends of Lee Terry say she had it all. She was beautiful, smart, classy, from a Belmead family, her father a surgeon. But there was a dark side, her friends say. She drank and mixed alcohol with prescription drugs. A series of drunk driving charges landed her in the court system. Her interactions with a judge and a defense attorney and a trip to Mobile, Alabama, became part of a police investigation into her death. I one with the exact location of her emergency. May 25, 2016, a maintenance man at the Stallman building in downtown Nashville calls 911. I'm pretty sure that there might be somebody passed away. Lee Terry was found on her bed, a Smith & Wesson handgun similar to this one at her temple. Police later established she'd been dead about three weeks. Metro Police conducted an investigation that would take months. They eventually concluded it was a suicide. But during the investigation, witnesses whose statements were recorded by Metro detectives recounted threats that they say Terry had made in Alabama, threats to expose two of the men on that trip, General Sessions Judge Casey Moreland and his friend, defense attorney Brian Lewis. You can sit wherever you want. You can sure. Yeah. Lewis was interviewed the day after Terry's body was found. The apartment where she was found, both her name and Lewis's name are on the lease. Yeah, I co-signed I co a lease, I think, around beginning of April. Lewis would confirm something in a second interview a month later. It was recorded at Central Precinct. He confirmed that he and Terry had a sexual relationship. Lewis is married. It would be classified a friend and a friend with benefits had I had sex with her on occasions, yes. The relationship began, he told police, after he represented Terry in a 2013 DUI case, a case that records show ended with Terry serving no jail time, though it was her third offense, a case where court records show Judge Casey Moreland ended Terry's probation early. A few years later, in late April 2016, Moreland was on that Alabama trip right before Terry's suicide. It was a trip that witnesses say turned awkward, ending with Lewis sending Terry home early. She was just mad that, that whole day. It was one of those deals where she was just mad that whole day okay. and was just abusive towards everybody. Terry's friend, Natalie Amos, was on that trip. She says Terry was I arguing with Lewis. And I just knew that she was irate. Amos told police Terry had threatened to expose an affair between Terry and Lewis and threatened to divulge something she had recently seen on Lewis's computer. She threatened him and she's like, the gig's up. Um, and she said, and I'm not talking about your wife. I took that as an idle type threat from her, something that was made in the heat of the moment and that, uh, you know, that she wouldn't follow through with. Two months after Terry's body was discovered, detectives interviewed Judge Moreland at his office in the courthouse. Police confirmed the judge's interview was not recorded. The detective's notes indicate Moreland was asked about Terry's threats. Moreland said he thought she would calm down and come to her senses. He says he felt sadness about her death. The detective's investigation concluded that Terry did in fact commit suicide using a gun owned by Brian Lewis. Several of Terry's friends who gave interviews to police say they still have questions. Lee Terry never would have killed herself. Not like that. John Nichols had been Terry's friend for 10 years. Several of Terry's friends say she never would have killed herself without first making sure her dog Lana was taken care of. She loved that little dog. She worshipped this little dog. And I mean, Lana was her best friend. It was her companion. And I just, 
knowing what I know about Lee, she never would have put Lana in harm's way, ever. Ever. I just wanted investigated. Really investigated. Roy Matlock dated Terry in 2015. I think it needs to be reopened. Police listed 20 reasons for concluding the death was a suicide. The most convincing, police said, was that blood splatter evidence showed no one was near Terry when she pulled the trigger. But friends still have questions. Why didn't the man paying her rent and bills come back to the apartment after that argument in Alabama? Surveillance video would show that after the Mobile trip on May 3rd, Lewis came to the stallman to pay Terry's rent. The video shows he went to the office on the first floor, then left without going upstairs. That was the last time police found Lewis used his swipe card to enter the building. She was there for 21 days in an apartment that was rented by, you know, Brian Lewis, and, and he didn't think to check on her. Lewis told police he wasn't going to visit Terry until she called to apologize. Coming up, allegations that Terry swapped sex with the judge for help in her case. And our investigation found she wasn't the only woman claiming a sexual relationship with the judge led to a better outcome in court. And I was quiet for almost a year. And she made the comment, she says, oh, well, but I slept with the judge, so it's not going to be any big deal. It was like her last resort. Welcome back to our I-Team investigation, Influence, Infidelity, and Men in Power. Before the break, you heard from a woman who says her affair with Judge Casey Moreland made her court fines disappear. But that's not all. This may be the last video taken of Lee Terry alive. Security camera footage from the Stallman building. It's now in the evidence vault. Police say the night of May 4, 2016, Terry walked her dog Lana one last time, went into her ninth floor apartment alone, then shot and killed herself. During the detective's investigation into her death, witnesses said Terry told them she had sex with Judge Casey Moreland. She was like, Natalie, I was out of options. It was that or I was looking at serious jail time. Natalie Amos was Lee Terry's former roommate. Amos says Terry told her she had sex with Moreland to get out of a DUI. Roy Matlock, Terry's former boyfriend, says Terry told him the same thing. She said, I feel nasty about what I've done. And, and I'm like, what are you talking about? And she says, I told you I slept with the judge in order to get out of my charges. We were not able to independently confirm the allegation. We know that Judge Moreland's name appears on court papers that shortened Terry's probation and that she never reported to jail to serve a five-day sentence. And we know that her attorney was the judge's friend, Brian Lewis. This isn't the first time the close relationship between Moreland and Lewis has been in the news. You may remember the case of developer David Chase. In the summer of 2014, Chase was arrested, accused of assaulting a girlfriend he'd been involved with. Chase called Lewis to step in as his attorney. A phone call from Lewis to his friend, Judge Moreland, led to special treatment for Chase. He was not required to spend 12 hours in jail to cool off like any other defendant. Police say Chase was let go that night. He returned and attacked the same woman a second time. The case was dismissed after the prosecutor said the alleged victim's statements were inconsistent. But the course of events in the Chase case led to a rare public reprimand for Moreland. And Lewis, he pled guilty to violating a code of conduct expected of attorneys. He agreed to accept a public censure. Lewis has denied our request for an interview. Our investigation also found that Moreland intervened in court proceedings on behalf of Natalie Amos. She also had a history of drunk driving charges. Two DUIs. Back she says that in 2015, she was struggling to pay her fines, $1,200, and mentioned it to her friend, Lee Terry. And she said, well, I can call Casey. And I was like, Casey? She said, Judge Moreland. The three met at Pinewood Social, Amos says. She was hoping to get more time to pay the fines since she was working. I was just really honest with him. And I'm like, you know, obviously I shouldn't have procrastinated. I've been calling and calling. And I'm kind of screwed here. I just need like four weeks and I can pay this off. And um, he just is like writing and not saying anything. And I'm like, so if you could just tell me who to call, that would be so helpful. And he's like, that's what I'm doing. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll be quiet. And then he just said, 
text me, you know, your this information, and I did, and I just really thought I was gonna get an extension, and he just, he just went away. The court's computer system shows that on July 14, 2015, her fines were all waived by Moreland, even though Amos says she never filled out any paperwork or appeared in court. No. Nothing? No, and I didn't even know about about that until like today, honestly. Um, There's a form you were supposed to fill out to right. say you are applying for indigency. I didn't know about that until today. I Did just, you ever go to court? No. It just disappeared? Yes. Natalie thanked the judge by text messages. She saved the text she says Moreland sent her in exchange. Your fees, fines, and court costs are taken care of. Now you officially owe me. Ha ha. The I team approached Judge Moreland. We had a lot of questions. This looks like firing squad. Well, we asked for an interview about the Alabama trip, about Lee Terry, and about Natalie. Natalie. Natalie Amos. We asked to sit down and talk on camera. All right. Well, let me uh, let me try to figure out what a good time will be. Okay. We've continued to press the judge for an interview. He declined. We did obtain a written statement prepared for the media, but never sent to us. It was part of an open records request we filed for Moreland's emails. Moreland had hired a PR firm to craft a response. He said in part, while I had limited acquaintance with both Miss Terry and Miss Amos, I have never had an improper relationship with either of them. We also discovered that Judge Moreland helped get tickets dismissed for Amos and that he intervened in a traffic stop right near here when she was pulled over by the police. You'll hear what happened next when we come back. Now back to our Channel 4 I-Team investigation, influence, infidelity, and men in power. We told you before the break that a woman who said she was having an affair with Judge Casey Moreland got her fines dismissed, but that's not all. I mean, my $1,200 was just gone. Natalie Amos wasn't robbed. She got a windfall. Old court fines, she said, were dismissed by Judge Casey Moreland. And that's not all. Court records show Moreland helped her with traffic tickets. Moreland texts her, I may can help in Davidson County. He reminds her to send a picture, and she does. They exchange suggestive comments. He says, so you want me to give you a little attention? and mentions a midday quick and dirty. So what happened to the tickets? We found these records at the traffic court clerk's office. The case is retired with no fines due. I'm very grateful when people are in a position to help me, and sometimes everyone needs help. Natalie texts the judge the following week mentioning the tickets and tells Moreland, thanks so much for your help, much appreciated. Moreland texts, they are gone, ha ha ha. Amos writes, I know, that's crazy. Moreland asks about meeting at her apartment the next day. What are you doing tomorrow between 3.30 and 5.30? Just be horny and naked, the text says. Then Moreland's texts go into details that we can't say on TV. It isn't the only time Moreland helped Amos. June 16th at 3.20 in the afternoon, motorcycle officer Michael Douglas of Central Precinct tells me he's just starting a shift when he notices a woman driving without a seatbelt and her tags are expired. He calls dispatch to find out if she has a valid driver's license. She doesn't. Comes back to a Natalie Amos D. David revoked. She's Natalie Amos, a very close friend of General Sessions Judge Casey Moreland. She says she calls the judge, then they send a series of text messages back and forth. She shared what she said were the texts between them. Moreland texts her, find out the officer's name. She writes, Michael Douglas. Moreland writes, if I need to talk to him, I will. She texts Moreland that the officer is running her license, adding, it's the last thing I need right now. Moreland texts, I gotcha, girl. Then he texts, what's happening? Did you drop my name? But the officer continues to write her a ticket until Moreland makes a phone call to the officer's supervisor at Central Precinct. Metro Police verify what happened next in a written statement, that Sergeant Mark Byrne, Douglas' supervisor, was contacted by Judge Moreland. Police say Moreland tells the sergeant that Amos was on the way to his office for a meeting. 
The statement says Byrne perceived that Judge Moreland wanted the motorist to be allowed to continue to his office. Byrne rides his police motorcycle over to where Amos is stopped to convey that message to the officer. Moreland texts Amos that help is on the way, and she writes, sweet. Amos is allowed to drive away on a revoked license. She doesn't get a citation for it, just the ticket for no seatbelt and expired tags. So what kind of business did Amos have with Moreland at his office the day she was stopped by the motorcycle officer? Amos showed us texts she said were between her and Moreland. The texts back and forth show they didn't have a meeting planned, no official business. In fact, when she was stopped, Amos was on her way to meet the judge at a bar called The Batter's Box. After they met for drinks, Amos said they did go back to the courthouse to have sex in Moreland's office. Moreland texts her at 6.30 that night, damn, you're hot. The next afternoon, Amos texts that she's super grateful for his help. The judge texts, just used my superpowers. And then, my desk still has butt marks on it. Our I-team investigation also found Moreland sending texts while he was on the bench, once mentioning he was listening to information about a wiretap during a cocaine case, another time sending a picture of the defendants before him. And sometimes he referred to the defendants in his sex trafficking and drug court as hoes and junkies. We shared those texts with law professor Charlie Jay. He's a Carnegie fellow who's testified before the U.S. Senate as an expert on judicial ethics. If what is reported here is true, this may not be a judge who is well-suited to the bench. And so I think that the best bet is to step down. Judge Moreland has not stepped down. He has stepped aside from two of the dockets that he created, the human trafficking docket and the drug court docket. I went to cover the drug court one day. You'll be surprised at what we found. That story after the break. As our Channel 4 I-Team investigation continued, Judge Casey Moreland stepped aside from two of the dockets he'd been handling. One specialized in people with alcohol and drug problems. I went to cover the drug court docket, but apparently they didn't want me inside. 93 defendants are here for court today, but they're all about to be sent home. Channel 4's I-Team is here. Wow. Whoa, what's the news? They just let everyone out because Channel 4 was there? <laughs> yeah, I got a free day. I got a free day. <laughs> We're not stopping our investigation. It's already brought results. The FBI has opened an investigation. And the state board that has the power to discipline judges took a rare step issuing a letter publicly announcing they are investigating. Moreland agreed to step down from his position as presiding judge. It's a job that carries administrative responsibilities. He also no longer oversees the drug court and the human trafficking courts. Anti-trafficking advocates said his actions set back their movement, causing victims to mistrust authority. What would you want to say to Judge Moreland? You let us down. You let the victims down. Some of Moreland's fellow judges have stopped referring any cases to Moreland's drug court. And Brian Lewis has resigned from the board of the private foundation that helps raise money for drug court. He had been president. What the board does is good stuff. And the contributions that Brian uh, made to this board were significant and, and very valuable and helped a lot of people. Also, nine Metro Council members and a state legislator have called for the judge to resign. Now a postscript. Our investigation continues to turn up more controversial actions by Judge Moreland. The Davidson County District Attorney is speaking out publicly about Moreland stepping into a DUI case, erasing jail time and other penalties the state had agreed to in a plea bargain. The defendant in that case, Moreland's future son-in-law. And what the I-team has uncovered has been turned over to the U.S. Attorney. Our investigation isn't over. We're still digging. If you have something you think we should know, contact us. I'm Nancy Amons for the Channel 4i team.